Who wants next? Is our power? Carl? Uh, Howard is only marginally right that presidents have tended to do this over time, but, but there's a big difference between what presidents have done in the past and what this president is doing. For example, we're here in New Orleans. In the aftermath of Katrina, Bush appointed a re recovery, we didn't call it a czar, we call it a coordinator, who was temporarily, and I mean a matter of weeks, inside the White House, but then was moved outside the White House so that he was housed at Department of Homeland Security where FEMA is located in order to sort of have presidential imprature that this person within this department is responsible for acting. This president, though, has a large number of czars who exist within the White House, and this troubles me because, first of all, some of them are designed to avoid congressional scrutiny. One example is Carol Browner. There is a Council of Environmental Quality established by statute in which the head of the CEQ is subject to Senate confirmation and is subject to the call of conference of Congress. And instead what they've done is they've layered that person over with Carol Browner who is not subject to the call of Congress. Then second of all, there are a number of czars who, I don't know where their statutory, uh, uh, statutory authority comes from. Where, who, where is the statutory authority for somebody to go in and fire the board of GM as the auto czar? I, I don't know. Where's the, where's the statutory authority of the auto czar to go in and say, we're going to give a huge chunk of Chrysler to the union far in, in, in excess of what the union would ostensibly be due by their contract and, and crush the bondholders? I mean, I don't see the statutory authority there. There's also, and this is a minor thing, but it's going to be very interesting to see how Obama resolves this. The White House budget, the budget for the executive office of the president is very small. Each one of these people has to be paid, as do their staffers. It's, not, it's probably well in excess of the White House budget to pay for all of these, quote, czars and their people. So what they're doing is they're probably putting these people on the payroll of some other agency, like Treasury or State or Commerce or Labor, and, quote, detailing them to the White House, which is allowed under law. However, the law specifically says you cannot detail somebody to the White House in perpetuity, there's a limit as to how many months, I think it's 14 months that they can be there, and then they can't be there any longer. So what's going to happen when we get up to the time limit when the law says these so-called people detailed to the White House can no longer be there? Well, how's the president going to get around that? But I'm troubled by this. There is a reason why, I'm a believer in a strong executive, but there ought, that we, have, we have through checks and balances, legislation, tussle back and forth, arrived at an imperfect and constantly changing structure between the Congress, the executive, and the judiciary. And this one seems to me to be significantly changing the nature of that without a big debate, without a lot of legislation, and without really a concurrence by, by uh, the, the, the Congress of the United States. I take it you don't care for czars, Doug. Look, I'm exasperated listening to Carl go on about this nonsense. And he should be ashamed of himself, because I think he actually knows better. He's talking about the laws, and he's, he's worried about uh, there's not legislation, and this isn't uh, right because it's not. With, for Christ's sake, these are the same people that set up Guantanamo. These are the same people that have set up uh, Homeland Security, which has its own campus now in Washington, D.C., and is never going to be eradicated. These are the same people that hired 50,000 little bedbugs to go through your laundry at airports called the TSA. Yeah, we had a and reason to do that after he's not worried about any of that stuff. He's worried about yeah. the stuff. No, nothing he's, happened he's on 9-11 that should cause us to worry about airline security. These poor hapless Democrats do. And you know what? Each one of those was set up by statute. It was done through the process outlined by the Constitution of the oh, United Christ. States. Everything Hitler did in Germany was done by oh, statute. Oh, please. This You're is, not suggesting Bush oh, is Hitler. I, I'm totally Don't comparing Don't make yourself it. look foolish. I, I'm totally do not let make yourself look foolish. This is just sad. Let me just if I may just raise an issue on a point. Even Howard wouldn't call Bush Hitler, or would you? Come on, give me a moment. Okay, so we, well, there we go. We went down we that road the last time we were on, and I had to use a, a, an epithet to get you to calm What's down. We're answer? not going to use that would again. You call, would you call it? Of course you, you, not. Oh. Look, uh, here, here's the deal. The left wing and the right wing of the de uh, Demo Republican Party speak to you. Let, let's, just, let's just talk about the people here for a second. Now, look, I did not support the, I think Guantanamo was a mistake. But... Let me just say this one thing about Guantanamo. State. First of all, I, I think it shouldn't have been done. If, if I had been president, we wouldn't have had Guantanamo. We would have brought those folks to the mainland United States. Having said that, having said that, the vast majority of the American people do not disapprove of Guantanamo. The vast majority of the American people do not want the people who are in Guantanamo coming back into the mainland United States. So we can argue about, and we do argue, we disagree on Guantanamo. But the fact is, Doug, 
the, the vast majority, this is a democracy, and the vast majority of the, of the people of this country supported the president who I did not agree with when they set up Guantanamo, and the public rules in a democracy, and this is an example of it, whether you like it or not. Uh, my next question is, what is uh, before Congress and the president right now, health care is the big deal. I mean, 16 years ago, we had uh, Hillary Care, and it was defeated, and it caused a Republican revolution, and the election of 94, we're one year, year away from the midterm elections. And um, President Obama's made this his signature uh, piece. He's not delegated it to his wife. That's an improvement. Uh, so, but uh, he made two statements in the last month which mystify me. One is we're going to pay for this new bill by eliminating the waste and fraud in Medicare. Now, that program has been around over 40 years, and if they can't get it right after 40 years, how are they going to get the next one right? And the second statement um, is that we shouldn't fear public choice because, after all, Federal Express does a better job than the post office. Um, you wrote an exceptional column about public choice. That's who can be against free choice. What do the words public choice mean when it comes to a government involved? Yeah. Um, well, well, first of all, let's take that first one. I, it's interesting. The CBO issued a letter on the 7th uh, spelling out the details in the Bacchus bill, and I think it is page 8 of, of, uh, of the attachments, spells out how much money is going to be achieved by getting rid of waste and fraud. Starting in three years, $200 million a year. That's out of an $849 billion bill. They think for seven years we will have roughly seven times $200 million. So we aren't even up there to serious money. Uh, so the, the, look, the president misled the American people when he suggested this would be painless. If you take a look at what they plan to do, it is basically to ration health care, to take $400 billion out of Medicare by putting in arbitrary price controls. I mean, uh, the Wall Street Journal had an excellent summary of those. I mean, 20, they're going to mandate that we will suddenly have 24% less paid out for MRIs and CTs. We'll have 44% less paid out for uh, uh, on, uh, radiological oncology. I mean, they're just sort of arbitrarily going to decide how much health care is going to be available to American seniors and have a government bureaucrat do it rather than having a market do it. Uh, Look, the public choice would crater the private insurance market. And, and uh, you know, first of all, it, it is, Howard and I had a debate in DePauw a couple of weeks ago where he, he brought up the Postal Service and said the Postal Service competes with FedEx and UPS and isn't that great. Well, the post office takes its monopoly on first-class mail and uses the profits from that to subsidize its package service to compete with UPS and FedEx, and it can't even deliver the package as fast and as cheap as FedEx or UPS, and it still runs a budget deficit offline of totally $7 billion a year. B bureaucracies are not as efficient as markets in delivering, in delivering services, wherever. And we, we already have, let's not kid ourselves. Let's not kid ourselves. We don't have a market in healthcare. Last year, Americans spent $2,441 billion on health care. 54% of it came out of our pockets. 46% of it came out of the government's pocket, meaning out of our pockets with a middleman in it. And we see what happens. In Medicare and Medicaid, a doctor gets paid 81% of what he gets paid from a private insurer under Medicare. And a hospital gets paid 71% of what it gets paid from a private insurer. The American Association of Pediatric Hospitals says that for every dollar of expenditure it has on a child covered by a government health program, it gets reimbursed 31 cents. This cost shifting. Somebody has to pay that price tag. And the price tag gets paid by people who have private health insurance coverage, who the doctors and the hospitals have to jack up their prices in order to recover that money. It's estimated to be $88 billion a year conservatively that we're having to pick up for Medicare and Medicaid under payments. We don't have a private market insurance. Our problem with health care today is not enough market, too much government, not the other way around. Mm. <coughs> All right. Let me, let me ask you a question, if you don't, don't mind. How many people in here are on Medicare? How many people in here would voluntarily give up your Medicare and take your chances with pre-existing conditions and cost increases by giving it up, getting rid of Medicare, and going to the private insurance market? A few hands. Yeah, there are a few. Good luck. <laughs>